Hello guys, welcome to another episode of the Commerce Lab by Comsi, the place of everything related to Amazon FBA and e-commerce. My name is Vincenzo Toscano, founder and CEO of Ecomsi, and today we'll bring you another special guest. Her name is Kitty Lai, and she's the founder and CEO of MeBrand, which is an amazing agency where they specialize on everything that has to do with branding and design around your personal and business, right? So what a better person actually to discuss today's topic, which is going to be around what are some of the best strategies when it comes to branding your product, right? So it's a pleasure, definitely, Kitty, to have you here. So how are you doing today? I'm I'm great. Thank you so much for having me, Vincenzo. It's you know I'm really excited to be here and to sort of um you know um give some tips and um, <laughs> strategies for your viewers. So I'm really really excited to be here and yeah. Can't thank wait. you. Yeah, me too. I mean, thank you very much. Uh, to to be honest, I follow your work for quite a while so i have heard your podcast in, in another podcast like the wizard of ecom and all those other podcasts and i love the content and the strategies that you share and definitely it, it was one of my goals to have you on so i'm pretty sure you're gonna share a uh, very good nuggets today for the audience wonderful <laughs> <laughs> awesome so now let's get started um first with you usually when, when i when i do podcasts with people that bring on board i usually like to learn about how you got started into the e-commerce journey and branding specifically. So, you know, people that's listening and watching can, you know, familiarize more with you before we jump into all the technical strategies of today's episode, yeah? Yeah, so um, let's wind it all the way back. <laughs> <laughs> so I've always loved branding and packaging. Um, and um, I, well, my first job was working in the packaging factory. When I was 15, I managed to work in a, a, a factory for Estee Lauder and Clinique and Aramis. So I was packing all the small little things into the packaging. And I just had a love for design and, and boxes and um, really lovely luxury products. And I, I went into a route of art and design. And, as, and essentially, I went to university um, studying brand communication. So that okay. was split up into um, graphic design, illustration, photography. And at the time, it was called time-based media. It's what you know, it's <laughs> old, old school video, you know, video. Yeah, so that, that was going a long way back. But I specialized in graphic design. And part of that yeah. was um, paper engineering and construction. And I really loved packaging. So yeah. I, I, I graduated as a graphic designer. I came out into the world of um, the real world um, in London. <laughs> uh, my first job was working at a graphic design agency. Okay. Um, throughout my time in university, I was actually working for London agencies as well. So I just had the love of, like, I just want to get working and just yeah. work experience. And I worked with real um, packaging agencies and graphic design mm. consultancy. So I had a good sort of understanding of what the real world was when I came out into London at 23. Um, wow. So and, you learn from the best very, pretty much because in London, there are so many good agencies and brands. So, yeah. yeah, and yeah. it's very difficult being a designer as well. So it was just, you know, it's finding that job and getting the excitement when you're that young. And I, you know, I, I got the job I wanted. And then subsequently, um, the journey went working for lots of different brands with this agency. But then one of these big names came up um, in the fashion retail world for Ted Baker. Okay. We're going back to 1999, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, a, it's, it's going a while back. But I wanted to join Ted Baker. I heard about them. They were a growing company, and it was a fashion brand. I thought, mm -hmm. amazing. They're looking for a graphic designer. I'm going to yeah. go for it. So at the time, I dropped my portfolio off at Ted Baker, and um, I saw someone else's name from my, my university. I thought, I'm not okay. going to get the job over her. <laughs> There's no way. There's about 200 applicants, um, um, but wow. they shortlisted to four. I was one of them. And, wow, congrats. and I had to go for a second interview and then I had to do a project and I got the job. And wow. I worked with um, Ted Baker for 10 years and I worked my way up from a junior designer all the way to man managing a whole team, a team of eight designers, um, wow. to do all the graphic designs in the marketing team, the point of sale, um, opening stores globally. So wow. uh, everything with the Ted Baker logo on came through me. Zip pull, every embossing, I would sign that off. So you wow. you would see a lot of things in stores and stuff. That That's happened. why they're succeeding so much now. It's because of you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so I was there for 10 years. Then the recession happened, 2008. I was made redundant. And it's I like, think. oh, no. Um, and then I went on to um, back to an agency. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, my agent, and they found me a job at TK Maxx. Um, so, it's, okay. uh, so I worked there freelancing, actually. Okay. Um, and then from that, I then my agent said, they, there's a permanent job for Kath Kidston, which is another retail brand. It's very mm -hmm. British, vintage florals, sort of um, yeah. 
that kind of heritage. And I grew the team from there because they were looking for a packaging, specific packaging designer. Okay. So I managed to put processes, structure internally, and they were growing as a team. And that was lovely to be part of a family, How it, exactly how it was with Ted Baker. I grew the team as well. And I was there for six years. And then... I got bored of doing things I've been doing for like <laughs> doing yeah. for 15, 16 years. I'm like, oh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like, oh, what do I do now? I, yeah, and <laughs> the reason was I wasn't learning anything. My knowledge, all the mm. things I've learned, um, because I can, I know it. I work very closely with printers, suppliers, so I know all the processes, ins and out of like the back end, working mm -hmm. with the shipping people, the wholesalers, the merchandise team, yeah. and this opportunity came along with um fba so okay. i learned to I, le I went on a weekend course i uh, did a master class learning how to sell fba okay. um and i loved it and i thought oh wow and my hand was up the whole weekend yeah. I question barcodes <laughs> i question question you know yeah. i lost my voice by day three i couldn't ask any <laughs> more questions um but yeah it was really exciting to sell um on amazon so i created yeah. a product um, I wanted to get it launched in like two, three, two months. I joined yeah. their academy actually. So I signed up to a year membership. Um, okay. I was launched within four months. Um, oh, that's very fast. Yeah. yeah, it was, it would have been free, but because Chinese New Year, I did this course on a De December 2016. But I did okay. by, by May 2017, I was launched in US and UK. I was really determined to get a product yeah. launch because I was that's so excited. Good. Um, and I went into the baby category because it was, you know, close to home for me. Um, yeah. And then the academy made me a mentor there because of the knowledge I have. And I was giving oh. back so much um, on the academy, their roundtable mentorships. So mm -hmm. you have a mentor, you go in every month and you talk about what your problems are, with, you know, with, with your business. Yeah. Um, so then they made me a mentor. So I was more their branding design um, specialist in for the for the academy and so that was great so I got wow. to sort of speak on stage give people knowledge and I love that um and then yeah you know, I was doing that for three years Covid hit yeah. uh, whole lockdown hit and then that was it um but within that journey because that was a part-time sort of thing once a month mentoring mm -hmm. um I still have my I was still running a business um for my graphic yeah. design I lost the love then I kind of it kind of kept <laughs> coming back it just kept coming back like a boomerang you know it's like oh, I don't want to do it uh, but I kept getting referrals people asking me Kitty yeah. can you design some packaging for me I need mm. to get a logo designed I need to get some branding designed. I thought okay I and I thought well actually I can work for myself now I don't have to work so hard for mm -hmm global brands I can do it in my own time my That's own true. place but I have all this knowledge um and I thought why not let's help others um to help with their brands and that's what I currently do um I obviously give them um, talks as well on you know about packaging and, mm -hmm. and design as well and you know I work with a lot of Amazon sellers um I know yeah. where they're coming from so I know the background I know the struggles yeah. I know what they're dealing with when you're talking about you know the back end of every you know the yeah. sales cycle, it's like oh a minefield um so I do want to have a good understanding of what they're going through and the packaging the suppliers all that I I know so when people do talk to me about their packaging or their branding it's like well you really need to consider this have mm -hmm. you thought about actually properly building a brand because a lot of um sellers come to me and it's like oh i need you to look at this and you know but i want I to have brand guidelines and it's like well you kind of gone backwards yeah. and you know you, you haven't got especially the there on amazon that it, it, we all know that nowadays those days of just taking a product not doing any kind of branding are over i mean you definitely need to think outside the box you need to really put some personality into it some thematic and and i that is why i think it would a I wanted to have you today because I feel that there's so many people that still do that. They just go to Alibaba, they just take a generic product. They yes. they think that a brand is just taking a, a logo from Fiverr, yes. put the logo on the, on the product, and that's it. Well, but that's not actual branding, and, and that's why I wanted to 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 hear from you what is actually branding because I I, I feel like there is so much miscommunication, especially in the Amazon space. The brand is just putting a logo, and that's it. But we are both know that's not the case. So. What is usually the first steps you recommend to people when thinking about branding and actually implementing that into mm. the Amazon space? Yeah. Right. So branding is the experience, the experience of a brand. Logo is just one element. That's just the visual yeah, identity of the 
branding. So yeah. you have to have the whole, um, you need to divide, define the brand as almost like a person. You mm -hmm. have the experience behind it, the tone of voice. How are you speaking to your customers? You know, is, is your brand a really fun brand? Are you going to say, hey, there, hi, or are you really serious? And, very influential i'm gonna get but there is because people get mixed up with thinking as the seller oh i'm just gonna post something up on instagram or whatever and then it's inconsistent and it's how it looks as well the whole feel and look and the colors also matter as well having something unique to your brand recognizable and it's building a brand is, is something that should be memorable it's not like yeah. having you know you can have like the same product as somebody else but how are you standing out what is making you different? What is your unique selling point? What is your brand story? Is there something behind it? What is that extra thing that makes you special? Why um, why are your customers going to choose you over them? Because I can't see the difference. I, I can see like it's like two dollars cheaper. I'm going to choose yeah. them. Um, that is not a brand. Um, a brand is is what you you give back to your customer after that. It's the whole experience after. You know, is it the, through the packaging? Oh my gosh. They've got mm -hmm. a story on here. I didn't realize that. Oh, and I'm going to look at the website. Let's. It's taking me to the website. I'm going to look at the website. And then you see more there. And you see the whole complete range of products that you might be building. And the whole, you know, maybe it's about the, the actual seller itself. They might have a unique story behind them. Not every seller wants to be the face of the brand, which is fine. Um, yeah. You know, it's, sure. it's what it's what. It's that whole feeling. It's like, oh, I really like this brand. I'm going to tell my friend and my neighbor mm. because, you know, I, I just got this beautiful box or this story. It's like really cool. I, you know, and I never knew. And they're giving back, to, you know, giving back to charity and, or something, you know, something yeah. that makes you, your brand unique. Um, yeah. You have to stand out. It's not just like, I've got a really great product. Yeah, it's really great. Yeah. yeah. It looks good. Logo looks good. And then what? you know yeah how can I, you move it beyond that so you have you have to do much more and it's it's hard as a seller it's, it's difficult hard. it's difficult yeah. yeah i mean every single day i have a calls with clients and, um, and brands that we manage and they're struggling with branding because they have their own definition of what a brand is and as i said they have very basic understanding they don't really understand how to create a, an experience around a branding which i i feel brand is also a way of living you know is is I, I don't know if you feel like that but i feel like when i'm buying for example an apple product yeah it's a way of, of living you know it, it's the ecosystem you create around you mm -hmm. and i think when you manage to create that that's when people don't care anymore about the pricing but the actual feeling they get from your products you know exactly um, yeah yeah, and it's a certain uh, certain psychology behind it. It's like when you say Apple, one of my be best products. I, I love one of the best brands I love because it make, it evokes that feeling. It's like mm -hmm. oh, Apple premium. It's affordable. Mm -hmm. It's the lifestyle. It looks good. You know, it's yeah. it's all stylish. It's all been thought through for a reason. And this is why big businesses they spend a lot on branding. They spend a lot mm -hmm. on advertising. They know what they're doing, um, and they're trying to reach out to their customers. They it's that it's that box that you never want to throw away. He's like, it's going to sit in the cupboard. And then you they, get keep it, they keep and then, it always in the office, yeah. Yeah, we all do it. And I don't know why. It's just like, oh, it's just too good to throw away. And, you know, you want, that's what the sellers need in their product. What is it? Is it that extra little tote bag that you, that comes with your product? And they get to keep it. And then they get yeah. reminded every time, oh, yeah. You know, mm. it's having something memorable um, yeah. with your I product. Um, yeah, yeah. I think as well that, I mean, those are very good strategies and I definitely recommend it. Usually playing with packaging and things like that, usually that's the, the initial step towards, I believe, creating that branding feeling. But I feel a lot of people, when it comes to Amazon, they feel that every time you mention branding to them, they get scared because they start thinking, oh, it, there are so many things to do, it's costly, it's very difficult. It, you know, they feel it's not something that they can achieve. Uh, and I honestly think it's possible, it's just something that's going to take time as anything, right? So I would like to hear from you, what are some of the actual first like baby steps somebody in the Amazon space should do to start creating the brand, you know, because uh, for sure logo is number one, you need to have a logo for mm -hmm. sure. But then after that, how, how you start brainstorming around how you create that ecosystem because every single niche is going to have different needs uh, for your customer you know every single a uh, avatar is going to require different things from a branding within that space so how do you design that if you're starting let's say for ground zero what, what are some actionable steps you would yeah advise? so the first thing is don't rush it don't rush it just because you want to get on, on on straight away but it does take time to build a brand um but i would say the very coming back to the very beginning is is creating it from like building a, a brand bible a guideline mm 
the guidelines of what your brand is all about go back start brainstorming obviously it comes from the naming um mm -hmm. obviously your product the the logo obviously is part of it but it's building that personality around it and it's mm -hmm. like how do you want to be seen by your customers don't just go in have the logo launch it then then think about or well, who is the customer mm -hmm. you might think oh yeah the customer is is female she's 20 plus or whatever and but go, go really go deep at who is that customer what are her mm -hmm. hobbies what does she like because you can tap into those things and really speak to them because then you can talk in their language um so you read building that brand it, um that brand guideline is set up with the the identity the personality the the brand mood the tone of voice what well, how you how do you speak to your customers you have to know that before you even start thinking about the logo because that will all translate because if it's a really fun brand and you've got a really serious logo and a really really corporate color um like you know and it's like it doesn't connect and i, I know think and you know that's where a lot of my clients come in they come to me and say oh can you help me i need some brand colors yeah. it's like I, <laughs> yeah and literally this week someone came to me i looked at it I, and i took time to look at the whole thing they're still setting up they've got it's live they've got free products and i'm like Mm, it's a really clinical looking logo uh, you're you're yeah. targeting women um you want yeah. me to create a guideline for you but you you don't want me to do the mission or your you, the other things what you know you can't pick and choose because it actually yes. again so i said look you have to start again pretty much i don't need to touch your logo i don't think it's it's okay but it's not if you want to redesign it is you know you should but i understand obviously that it's costly like you said mm -hmm. um but it's yeah right so if you are starting from scratch really take the time to think about it not just let's get a graphic design first and get get that logo mm. done it's not. yeah yeah yeah, yeah then, i totally agree i i think also and maybe you agree with this as well i don't know but i think something super important and i, and I, I feel that i see this on every successful brand is that they are very they are very strict with the colors they use they make sure that once the shoe the shoe is a thematic like say two colors like say blue and white mm -hmm. they keep those colors throughout the whole marketing and everything because i feel they're starting to create that identity as you mentioned right yeah. and and so many times i see brand in in amazon that they they just look at a rainbow right they don't have an identity jumping around with colors and things so i get that's come down to what you were mentioning right setting yeah. those rules from day one and making sure you respect absolutely so setting those guidelines and also it comes down to fonts as well i see like 100 different fonts it's like well you should only really use two and you can do variations of those two um but yeah you're right it, it should come down to the guidelines and once you've got those guidelines you can put you can give those guidelines to the designer to the web mm -hmm. designer to the packaging designer this is what our brand is and they can work with that rather than creating a completely new look and feel because they they're designers and us designers we like yeah. to do some cool stuff <laughs> something for zero yeah they we want to put our own mark on it you know and mm -hmm. you know if it's not briefed in properly then they're going to do their own thing and when it comes to color i think people get very confused with the brand colors and what they can and can't do and yes you have brand colors and you implement them throughout your marketing and stuff but it doesn't mean you can't change certain backgrounds and certain things okay. different to complementary colors so it doesn't mean you have to you're stuck because you know some people think oh no i can only use those you know and you have a palette of colors you have a range you have a primary primary palette you have a secondary mm -hmm. or complementary and um, and there's ways of like complementing those and as long as it looks like it's part of your brand you're not changing the font you're not changing the logo people can still see that it is you you know so yeah that's yeah. great and i think uh, as part of that uh, you also have what is a ton of voice right which i yes. I, I heard i i've seen that also that is very important in branding so i can briefly touch on that as well and what does it mean having the right tone of voice on your branding yeah yeah so tone of voice it generally it's how you speak to your audience and especially mm -hmm. when you're speaking in, in the marketing if you're advertising or you're putting captions on your social media or even on your a plus content on everything it's how you sort of um write your content um and how you speak to your customer you might be your tone of voice could be several things um well not several things you should hone down to one so yeah. um, say that your product is a, 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 a female product and it's mm -hmm. for ladies i don't know say a hairbrush and you probably <laughs> want the tone of voice to be friendly so you might want to yeah. be the, the warm friend um would be one. warm friend you could tell her anything she's my best friend and i'm going to tell her and that's how you talk to them you don't talk like a, a, a politician you talk like your friend and so you might use hey rather than hello you know on, mm. on the thank you card you might say thanks interesting thanks rather yeah. than 
thank you very much you know so there's ways of sex you know um you know and all there's a really comical sort of more humorous kind of approach your product might be a really humorous product you know it, could, it might be a squeezy stressful and you might make it a bit more fun and, and, and cho cheeky and, and joking around a little bit and you that's how you speak to your customers thinking hey give me a squeeze you know like or whatever yeah. so you, that's how you think of tone of voice what is your brand are they a cheeky brand are they or are they a cool brand like apple you know they have mm. a thicker tone and it's all the way the same how it is how they talk so you may i would suggest for sellers pick out your three favorite brands and then see mm. how they talk to you what are they saying but in their advertising in their social media and other things that you see how how do they talk how are their brands brands talking to you what is their tone or voice then you'll sort of think oh yeah i get it um because yeah. it can get diluted yeah and it will end up like your own and unless you want it just to be your own voice then that's fine then just keep it consistent all the way through don't change it and be somebody else yeah so that's awesome yeah that's very nice very nice advice so now i would like to start jumping into packaging right and and the reason why i want to start jumping into packaging is because i believe a uh, on amazon when it comes to packaging you can really knock it out of the park and what i mean by this is most of the people selling on amazon they just use a brown box a poly bag very generic packaging and i feel is if you can make it really something unique and you can as you say design the feeling and everything from like nobody can copy it that can really make you different from the rest so i would like to hear how have you seen doing the branding around the packaging impact some of your clients in amazon and what are some of the advices you you will give our own packaging what are some of the things you see working the best or, or things like that if you can share it yeah yeah so you're right a lot of amazon sellers oh let's just use what the supplier is giving me a brown box and let's put a logo on it sometimes it doesn't even have a logo <laughs> yeah <laughs> um yeah. you can do things um to the a brown box to be honest um you know i i often say you know if it doesn't need packaging don't give it packaging i'm all mm -hmm. for eco I, I you know if it doesn't need it then it, it doesn't need it yeah um but certain products need to be protected but to build a brand they do need some sort of first touch point for your customer so if you you want it to look good brown paper box i get that oh i'm just gonna open it oh yeah there's the product that's it that's the brand experience i get and i'll throw the box away mm -hmm. you want it that brown box to speak to your customer it could have the story it could have a, your nice branding on it your logo um and it can sort of um i i used an example actually on one of my talks before and there's a brand called who gives who gives a crap okay. and they sell toilet roll so mm. the to it's a brown paper box it says who gives a crap and it's got a, a secondary use for the box and they've done really cool things so it's like check uh, make me into a space shuttle or ah, exactly, I I, i'm great for children or I, I, cats love this box or there's other uses of using this box and they've created a whole story and other things you could a secondary use for this box so it's not wasted but it's really nicely designed anyway it's a brown box mm. it's just screen print printed with white on it the internals of tissue toilet roll come on you know mm. toilet paper it's not yeah. it's not exciting but yeah. each toilet roll is wrapped paper wrapped and they've got like nice patterns on it. Mm. So each of them are different. So like polka dots and other things, stripes and stuff. But they open up. Wow, that's cool. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting it. A and, and you're yeah. not going to do that on, on the normal roller paper. So it's unique, you see? Yeah. It's unique. So it's like, what steps can you do? And they obviously, um, they give back to charity. Um, and obviously I it's see. on paper. So it's recyclable or recycled um, paper that they've used as well so they they have a lot of they've got a bit of pledge as well going on with what they do i think they give a water aid or something but you know there's okay. some, and they promote that on the box as well so there's lots of things you can talk about your brand already the, the customer hasn't even opened the box it's already like well there's lots of information here and it looks cool it's re designed really well and it's got a really nice voice you know to it a tone of voice to it as well and you know and and, and you know customers will go back to it because like, oh i really enjoyed that you know what's the next <laughs> box going to look like or what's the next you know and you'd rather pay money for that um having something yeah. that makes you smile than something that's just oh okay it's just wrapped in plastic bag and it's come for you know yeah. so you know that's you know what that's where brown paper box can be more fun like you can do yeah, for more. sure and and if you've got a premium product or something like maybe um a phone or gadget or something you can still make it really nicely designed keep it slick mm. if you're looking for a premium feel uh, feel then it doesn't have to be fussy uh, people want to put fonts and they want to put this on and mm. if you're looking for luxury and premium you just need a logo on it and that's it keep it white 
and, and just yeah. that, that laminate on it uh, that looks yeah. brilliant enough uh, you know yeah. people like to over design and that yeah you know, i have seen that mistake a lot actually when people want to really go with the brand overboard and they put so so many things that then it, it, it looks like cheap because it has so many things on it you know yeah, yeah. so that's a good tip as well yeah and, less um, more. <laughs> yeah for sure yeah. Uh, now i think i have also seen um a lot of brands doing you know everything like the branding the experience the logo packaging everything but sometimes even after trying all that out the reality is sometimes you need to do rebranding right and we see that in big brands as well so that's something completely normal so i would like to ask you when a brand owner at least based on, on on basics should identify you know what i think it's a moment for rebranding how can you identify that moment because i know for some a brand owner is difficult to take that decision because it's costly you need to change all your processes and everything so when a brand sometimes requires rebranding based on your experience yeah so can you repeat that when does a yeah when does usually a brand requires a rebranding in, in based on your experience yeah right yeah, when does a um, a brand require rebranding? So yeah, that's what I get a lot asked a lot. So, <laughs> yeah, no. it, so I ask that the the question is: Is it a rebrand or a refresh? Mm. Because it's not. You don't need to change everything because your branding, your customer. You know, if you want to rebrand, is it your cust? Is it because your target audience isn't right? The customer is right. Then you mm. might think oh, I'm going to rebrand it. But if you've already got a core audience. And you don't need to rebrand as such. There's a refresh. You can just redesign the logo. Um, you don't have to do too much. And it might be just a refresh of the packaging. So it's not yeah. a rebrand, really. It's, you know, rebrand is the whole thing. Let's like, I oh, see. no, this, this customer base is not working. I, I'm going to, I just want it women now. I don't want it men. <laughs> I just want it, you know, or it's children now. Yeah. Or, or I'm, I'm, you know, or, you know, you're expanding to a different market. You know, it's mm -hmm. really, you know, what, you know, the, the, you don't have to rebrand um and i see yeah that's very interesting actually yeah because i feel that actually what we see usually on a lot of big brands is more a refresh right they change uh, slightly the packaging and stuff mm -hmm. but at the end of the day the brand is pretty much the same right yeah, yeah. awesome good so i mean to be honest we cover very good strategies and tips around branding i, I want to ask you uh, as a last question is there mm -hmm. something based on your experience you think we're missing in terms of strategy or branding or maybe big mistakes you would advise people to avoid anything as a last nugget <laughs> well, well a few nuggets that i really put don't rush it um mm -hmm. i would strongly recommend start with brand guidelines but if you've already started and uh, selling and you've got a brand and you think oh actually i'm not quite sure i would suggest a brand audit um a brand design audit and that's what i do i look at um, existing brands and i diagnose it like a doctor I look, like, I look at everything from your website to your social media, how you're talking to your audience, what mm. images you're kind of using, what, what A plus content you're using, what is a web, your Amazon um, listing look like, every single thing, or your packaging. I, I need to see whatever it is. I pull it all together and say, there, this is an overview. It's disconnected. Mm. It's not, you're not using the right font. You're not doing that. You're not doing that. And I literally write a whole, a whole document listing what is wrong with you. Not wrong. Um, yeah room for improvement i don't say it's wrong because it's learning yeah it's learning. because then they brought on all oh, everything yeah it was, it's, it this is what happens doctors <laughs> tell you what's what's wrong right they tell you they give you a diagnosis yeah, yeah. so yeah, I, yeah. I give you like the document this is where you can and then i give them room for improvement this is where you really should focus on and i tell them exactly what they need to do that's it i that's tell you awesome. what the solution um and then you've got to do it um or yeah. you can pay me to do it for you know, to, you know <laughs> yeah whatever it is um but yeah so having a brand audit you know um it can cost thousands it can cost hundreds you know it, it really depends but i yeah, i sure. work with amazon sellers so i don't charge a lot at all for what <laughs> what you should actually have for a brand audit um i i give more than you know more yeah. than anything to 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 the sellers anyway because i i just love branding and i, I like to that. see people do well and it's like well i've been doing it for ages and it's yeah <laughs> that's yeah. great I it's mean, in my blood you. yeah thank you thank you for that so yeah i mean thank you very much katie to be honest it, it's been a pleasure having you so before we conclude the episode i want to give you a few minutes just to share where people can find your agency or they can get in contact with you because i know a lot of people might right now need help with branding and i know it's a lot of there 
a lot of people out there that need support with that. So yeah, share your details and I'm going to make sure to put it down in the description for you as well. Yeah, absolutely. So my website is me mebrandglobal.com so it's mebrandglobal.com um you can contact me and make a booking for me there or i'm all over social media so on linkedin you just find kitty live branding expert yeah very active yeah, yeah i'm very active <laughs> on social media or instagram like me dot branding you um so you'll just find me on there or kitty live you'll just just google me you'll find me That's a... <laughs> Thank yeah you. so yeah if you have any questions then yeah just reach out um and let me know so Thank you, Kit. It's been a pleasure to have you. So yeah, looking forward to having you in a future episode soon. Yeah. Thank you very yeah, much for your time. Thank you so much for having me. It's been really fun. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.